what kind of specific axles um, are going on a trailer or a unit like this to move, obviously, something that valuable, but also something that needs to be that maneuverable um, into place? These would be hydraulic steering, uh, we call them force steer axles or command steer axles. So the, normally these will be used with a manual control system. So either a wired or wireless remote control, they'll activate the steering. When they're not using the steering, the axles are locked straight. So that's, that's how they'd be configured for highway travel if, if the trailer's gonna be transporting them on the highways. Then when they get off site or onto the launch site or whatever they're doing with it, then they'll activate the steering and maneuver the trailer around. So the, the four steering axles allow you to manipulate the position of the trailer exactly how you want uh, with the use of a remote control. So you can have somebody outside of the tow vehicle on the ground that's that's got a good view on what's going on and, and uh, then they can position the trailer how they want to for whatever it is they're, they're doing with it. That's that. Yeah, you beat me to that question um, because so it's actually so let's let's say someone is driving it down a highway once they pull onto site, then they actually so they 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 basically free it up so that it can move. And then so someone would it typically be somebody outside of the of the uh, the truck that's actually controlling yeah. it with this type of an application? Definitely. So how. How does that work? So how that that is the truck still the driver? Like, is that still the engine to move move it, or is there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 guy that's driving the truck is pulling the trailer still, but oftentimes with the length of these, if it's rocket trailer or anything really long like this where they need to steer, you can't see from the truck what you're actually trying to do at the back end. So there'll be a, either a pilot truck or somebody else be out on the ground that will kind of assess the situation and, and steer the trailer as they see fit to maneuver it through whatever obstacle or whatever type of area they're, they're trying to navigate. So with the four steer axles on, on units like this, on, on I mean, and these are obviously, these are, these are just an example of what you do. Are these custom axles or are there specs that you follow um, on, that that's just a standard based on weight and size and that sort of thing or or do you go do you have to know the dimensions weight of everything you're going to carry and then build a specific specific uh four steer axle for for these units yeah so most of our axle products <clears throat> four steer self steer whatever it is have capacity ranges so we look at what the payload requirements are we choose a capacity range there's some components on the axles that are gonna be common throughout that capacity range, but more or less all the other dimensional characteristics are all custom tailored to the application. And especially on these four steering projects, it's very important that we know all the details, prove everything out. There's a lot of 3D modeling and back and forth with the customer to make sure everything's gonna fit. Uh, like on a regular trailer with a non-steerable axle, if it fits in when you, bolt it up then you're good but on a steer yeah. axle you have to consider the fact that the wheels and tires and and it brakes and everything else and the, and the steering linkage that's all moving side to side and with suspension travel up and down so you have to uh, visualize the envelope that you need for everything to function properly and avoid any interferences and, and still get the performance that's required out of the out of the piece of equipment so it's you, you got to know what you're doing and you got to have really good communication engineering department here and with the customer. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, not easy, but we've done it enough that we think we're pretty good at it. Is that, uh, there's a couple questions I have on, on that. When it comes to the braking systems and let, let going, going back to the four steer axles, if, if someone's um, running it remotely in that, are you hooking up all those, the wiring components in that? Like what, what is the customer actually getting when it, from you? And then what do they add on to that axle? It kind of depends on the customer. So mm. uh, there's, there's some customers that prefer to d design and manufacture their own 
steering controls. So they'll buy the axle from us dressed out with the options they want on, uh, maybe some custom features to integrate to their steering control. Uh, then other times we'll have full hydraulic cylinder or steering linkage on the axle. Uh, so it just goes right into their, their steer system. Uh, and then in certain applications, we supply the entire axle suspension steering system oh. and the uh, power unit to, to actually power the, the steering. So most of the time <clears throat> with these type of trailers, you'll need a gas engine hydraulic power unit or a diesel engine hydraulic power unit, depending on the other requirements on the trailer. They may already have the power unit factored into their project so we won't need to supply that and then next next from the power unit is the actual hydraulic controls themselves all the valves and the electronic side of it to run remote control if you're going to be using a remote or or if you're just going to use hand valves or, or a wired uh, pendant so it, it all depends on what the cu customer wants some are comfortable doing some of this the, they're on their own maybe they've got some proprietary concepts they apply to their trailer applications and then others like a, just a turnkey setup uh, where everything's taken care of by us i want to run through a couple of the other ones luke um because of the you have the four steer axles and then you do things like the standard trailer axles but do you also do like self-steer axles off highway, it's it's one of those things. Again, um, like so often happens on the show, I I get the I get the company that we're going to be featured. I might talk to them sometimes, or or someone else books them. So you know, I, I kind of only have one or two call quick calls with them before, and I, I think, oh, axles. Well, that'll be an easy thing to talk about. And then I start digging, and I go, oh no. I, sometimes even it's the night before, and I realize, okay, I know nothing about axles. So can you run through um, just some of the the, the what, well? Let's start off with the self steer axle. Can you run through that for us quickly? Yeah. So the self steer axle is is a product line that really built our company. It was. Uh, Kind of the the initial guiding principle as, of what we were going to be as as KGI, and uh, what a self steer axle is just a, an axle that will steer on its own without any external input, similar to like a caster on a chair. You you push the chair one way and the wheel spins around behind the, the little post that goes into the bottom of the chair and just follows wherever you're pushing the chair. So a self-steer axle works in a similar way. They'll only steer going in the forward direction uh, and uh, you lock them when you want to back up or, or lift them off the ground with a liftable suspension. And the idea of a self-steer axle is for applications where you've got a certain amount of payload and you've got weight and dimension regulations that stipulate what your maximum axle load can be. To carry more weight, you have to have more axles. So say it's 20,000 pounds per axle and you have 80,000 pounds on the axle setup where you need to have four axles. Well, normally, once you go past three, then you end up with some tire scuffing issues uh, just because oh. of the axle spread. So your tires wear out, you beat up the roads and the infrastructure. So in certain areas, provincial and state uh, transportation regulations require the use of, of steer axles on the trailer so that the, uh, the trailer and the, and, the, and the whole setup isn't really beating up the roads. And, and also you'd be going through tires like crazy if you had axles spread all down the trailer that didn't steer. So, right. so that's the main purpose for those axles. They're, they're not used to necessarily improve the maneuverability of, of the trailer. It's, it's more so to spread out the weight and uh, make sure that it, it performs properly and, and follows all the weight, weight and dimension rules. I was watching a, a video on your website, which is good. I, I, I actually hope we can get that, some of that footage to, to show up in, in this interview um, because it's quite, it's quite a nice layout to help the audience understand. And there's an air take damper system and a spring, uh, spring shock, I, I think, is, is how it's... Could you, could you sort of unpack the differences between the two in respect to a self-steer? Yeah, so there's... 
It kind of depends on the application, the region, and just customer preference on, on what they want for a damper system. But essentially a self-steer axle needs a damper system so that the tires don't wobble back and forth going down the road when you're active, actively steering. So what I mean by that is there's, there's a lock on the axle, a mechanical lock that will keep it locked for high speed travel. Yeah. And then below a certain speed, when you want to use the steering, because you're likely going to navigate some some turns, then you uh, release the lock and the axle will steer. If you don't have a dampening system, then the, the axle is going to wobble all over and produce all kinds of undesired uh, movement in your trailer, and unpredictable behavior. So Back to that swivel chair kind of thing. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Like if your swivel chair was going... 30 miles an hour, you probably w wouldn't be gliding across necessarily smoothly. So, so we have to dampen the, all the harmonics and vibration that, that goes between the road and the, and the tires into the trailer with, with the dampening system on a steer axle. So the two systems you mentioned, the air, airbag damper versus the uh, dual spring shock. The, the key difference there is the airbag, uh, it allows you to adjust the dampening pressure based on the air pressure you apply to the airbag itself. So when the axle steers, it compresses the airbag, gives resistance to the steering, and the idea is to calibrate the resistance so that it gives you steering but doesn't restrict the steering. So you kind of want maximum pressure without scuffing the tires. Right. So, so, so depending on the application, the advantage to that setup is you can adjust the uh, the pressure. You can also link that up to your suspension airbag pressure, which is adjustable based on the load of the trailer, or what what the trailer has on it for a load. So, so then it automatically compensates for the conditions. There's more parts to that system. It's uh, it does require a little more maintenance, but it does have some some performance advantages. The dual spring shock is kind of put, put them on and forget about them and they're mm. cheap and uh, there's no external inputs or adjustments required once you've installed them. So it's kind of one of those things where it once they're put on, they can't be put on wrong after they've been set up properly the first time. Whereas the airbag, uh, you could go and adjust things and then have it totally function in incorrectly. So, so uh, that's, those are the two key differences. And uh, the, the shocks are cheaper, they're more cost effective, simpler, they're easy to get anywhere. So, so some customers prefer that, um, where, where other customers don't. Where we see the airbag is more popular is in applications where the steerable is gonna be lifted when the trailer's unloaded. They like oh, that because then when the tires come off the ground, the airbag system always centers the axle out. Whereas with the shocks over time, as the shocks wear, you may get a slight difference in the resistance force in each shock because there's two of them pushing against each other. So then when you, if you're lifting the axle, the axle may kind of steer a little bit on its own once it's off the ground and it, it looks kind of funny going down the road. Is the is the damper system, um, if I'm understanding it right, would that be more for an application where the load weights are going to vary and the environment that you're going to be traveling in is going to vary more so than a spring shock where it's very you kind of know what you're going to be putting in that in on that unit and the and the terrain that you'll be traveling on. Is that kind of right or not? Is that not really why you'd go one system or the other? I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, varying loads with a with a damper system that can vary its resistance is is a sensible solution. Whereas the, the shocks will be used in applications where you're either going to be unloaded or fully loaded. It's not normally going to be somewhere in between.